How's it going everybody? Dotodoy here back with another Dragon Ball Fighters video and in this video since the world tour has now officially wrapped up I figured we'd go ahead and look back at all of the information we got over the course of both days and take a deeper look at them and talk about what they mean for the future of fighters heading forward into season 3. This is going to include both talking about the new characters that will be coming to the game both Kefla and UI Goku although UI Goku's trailer was very short as I assume they are still doing a lot of work on the character. Kefla we have a lot more to talk about on the other hand. We're also going to be talking about a wealth of other things like the assist changes, the comeback mechanic change, as well as just other changes that we could clearly see in the video but they also didn't comment on directly. Let's start by going over the assist changes as that alone will probably shake up the game in a huge way. So as I'm sure most of you know already, in the version of Dragon Ball Fighters we have right now, every character only has one assist and it's been that way since the initial release of the game. Now though with this new system in place, every character will have access to three different assists and the player can select which assist they're going to rock out with upon picking the character on the select screen. Now it is important to note that these new assists being put into the game aren't new animations per se, they are just different tools that the characters already had restructured to be an assist. This is why you see Goku Blue in the trailer throwing out an elbow for his assist as he already has access to that move in his original command list. We also see some more creative uses of these limited assets in base Vegeta's assist where he performs the last couple of hits of his auto combo to get off the dirty fireworks and then the assist itself combos into a knee drop in order to bring them back to the ground. The overall reason this assist change has so many people excited is because a lot of the times if a character's assist is just really bad in a tag team fighting game like this, it's most likely better to just go find a different character that has an assist that fits your needs than trying to work around a really bad one. Because of this you can expect to see more team variety especially during the earlier parts of the season as players try out different assist variants of different characters and see what teams they want to rock out with. This is something that the developers explicitly state in this video as a goal of theirs, they want to make sure that players can just pick their favorite characters instead of having to worry about picking one or two of them and then filling the third one out with an assist that helps them. Another area that they had to tackle in order to actually do this though was removing fuzzies from the game. Really quickly, a fuzzy in Dragon Ball Fighters basically means that you're just so tall that you can get hit on the way up so quickly that you can't reasonably be expected to react to it. A good player will force you into a situation where you basically have to guess between a high or a low, putting tall characters at an instant disadvantage compared to characters like GT Goku for example. Now don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that tall characters can't be good despite of this, Dragon Ball Z Broly was already very good, but the removal of this option will definitely make Dragon Ball Z Broly better. I should also mention that fuzzies are more of an offline tournament kind of thing, you probably weren't experiencing them online, especially if you only play casually or only play ranked occasionally. Usually that's only something you'll see from serious players in offline environments, but you can occasionally see it in some higher ranked online matches. While the video was showing us some new assists, it also showed us some other stuff we could expect to see from season 3 without directly commenting on it. These things include watching Goku reflect a key blast while charging up his key and what could be potential nerfs to the snap system in Dragon Ball Fighters. The first one probably isn't that big of a deal but it is interesting for sure and definitely very Dragon Ball so it's actually a welcome change in my book even if it ends up not being used in play. The only situation where I could see this thing maybe being useful and I actually had somebody else tell this to me I didn't even think of it myself is in a situation where a character like maybe Broly for example is trying to bait you to super dash in and he keeps jumping and throwing key blasts. Maybe it could be a deterrent for him if you're going to build like maybe a half a bar or a full bar if he really goes all out uh, to not spam the key blast. But I don't know, even then it's kind of up to the Broly player to make a mistake in that way. But who knows, it's, it's definitely a, a tool for sure. The second one though could be huge. I mean, just look at the amount of time Yamcha has to make a move on the opponent that he snapped out here. Now again, they didn't comment on this directly. So it's going to be hard to judge from this what the actual change is here. For all we know, maybe they introduced a system where you can personally delay or speed up the amount of time that your snapped in character comes in. But from just watching the video, it looks like it is probably just a flat change to the speed of which a character pops in. Because mid screen, when you snap a character out now, it looks like you're going to have to really stretch it if you're going to keep up pressure. Let me know your thoughts on this in particular, as I'm really curious. It, it might not affect the corner all too much, but mid screen snap uh, could definitely see a change from this. After that, the only big thing we have to cover in in this video is the comeback mechanic that a ton of people are worried about and I just want to say right away I wouldn't be too worried about this as we don't know exactly what it is yet I'll go ahead and jump to the chase spoilers but uh yeah the Dragon Ball Fighters development team haven't always been the best at telling us exactly what a system is going to do in this game but they have always been really good at making sure that it does its job it's not going to get in the way it's not going to ruin the game I always think of the Dragon Ball system when I hear stuff like this back in the day if you weren't aware they revealed the Dragon Balls 
Uh, and a lot of people were like, oh no, it's gonna ruin the game. Uh, it's gonna be broken. But nowadays, you don't even see Shenron. And if you do, it's actually pretty hype. But yeah, now let's go ahead and get into what we actually know about the comeback system. So it appears to change the UI quite a bit. You can see Team Gohan comes in and um, the game really dials it up a notch. It, Gohan gets a huge golden border and basically just comes in with his old teammate Spark. I'm guessing they showed us this for a reason. I don't know exactly why, but I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's because it's leveling up his sparking from a level two to a level three to match his current state of the game. Other than that, the only practical effect is that we can see the Gohan player has four bars when Goku is out and a little bit extra. And when Goku dies, it went ahead and gave him the fifth bar so Gohan could go ahead and do the level five. As of right now, I think that may be the only real practical effect. A lot of people were talking about the damage, but the damage really isn't that great here. This is a raw level five coming from a sparking opponent. The damage has always been somewhat equal to this. So yeah, unfortunately, we don't know too much about what the comeback system is or whether or not it's going to be a huge deal. But what I'm way more interested in what this bar on the top here does. Originally, I thought it might have been a way to keep track of how close you are to the corner or how close the players are, but it actually appears to sway with Team Gohan as he does more damage to sell. So I was thinking maybe this is like a momentum system in Dragon Ball Fighters, and that actually has me way more worried than the comeback stuff because Dragon Ball Fighters is already one of those games where if you have the momentum, you feel really strong. I would hate to see a Dragon Ball Fighters where you have the momentum, you're feeling strong, and then you get an extra reward for having that momentum. I don't even want to know what that would look like. But again, this is another one of those things they just kind of showed us without really acknowledging it. So that's all we can say for now. Other than that, we also get a peek at some UI changes to both in-game and the character select screen. Announcements that they'll eventually be adding new game modes and them acknowledging that the one patch a year system really didn't work out for them and they will be looking into, if needed, later balance patches in this same year. I know that's definitely a welcome thing by most of the people still playing this game. That's kind of the reason why GT Goku has become such a, a meme for Dragon Ball Fighters because not only is he the strongest character right now and really annoying in a lot of ways, but he's been like this since release and we've just kind of had to hold that for all this time. Hopefully Arxis sees it that same way. I don't know why I'm so scared that they're going to buff Kid Goku in some way. Uh, I Hopefully that stays just a nightmare I had, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm scared, man. But now we can move on to the second round of announcements that took place on Sunday after the finals had happened. And at first we were shown the leak dramatic finish from a long, long time ago, now fully complete. And it looks amazing, by the way. This is actually the first dramatic finish that features two characters on one team. I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work out. Maybe it will still only be something that happens with Super Saiyan Goku and Jiren. But yeah, I don't know. I think they might actually require you to have Freeze on your team for this one. This is still very unfortunate for Jiren mains because now they've just got another avenue to get bullied by. And another avenue also popped up after this because it was also the reveal of Ultra Instinct Goku's trailer. And like I said at the beginning of this video, we didn't actually get too much on Ultra Instinct Goku because they pulled the fake out on us. Uh, and he's not actually the first character of this season. They did give us some gameplay to look over. Like we did get his standing heavy, which seems to get a lot of carry. And that goes from mid screen to the corner if you can get a super dash after it. The speed of it was also really great. After that, we get to see some projectile counters from Goku, putting him directly behind the opponent. We also see an example of what happens if Goku dodges an airborne key blast. He follows the opponent up there as well. Now, Dragon Ball Fighters has handled key blast counters very differently. We got Jiren's, who is absolute trash, and then you got Janemba's, who is really good. Hopefully, UI Goku is even better than Janemba's, but we'll just have to wait and see for that. We also get a very quick shot of Goku EXing one of his moves to go through Jiren, and it looks like this will present an opportunity to counter, maybe with a beam assist or something like that. Uh, but again, that's something you're going to have to test when the character drops. But that was it for UI Goku aside for some more animations. And now that we have to talk about Kefla, I'm actually going to switch over and do this one more in a live style just to be sure that I don't miss out on any of the things I want to talk about here. Because just from this trailer, Kefla looks insanely promising. I think she might actually be pretty good. Uh, of course, it is just a trailer, so we won't know until we play her. But that goes for just about every trailer. Right away, we're going to see her Y auto combo. That's probably her standing medium that we're seeing here. Can't be too sure, but boom. That looks like a low 2L to me and one with, <laughs> with really nice range. That looks like a Vegito kick, <laughs> but low. Damn, I, I, I hope if that's a low 2L already, we're kind of cooking. And then we get another nice one. It, it's just all good stuff back to back to back. If this... This is very Android 17 like, by the way, jumping from here, except she doesn't have to make contact with the wall and the recovery doesn't look too bad. She's starting to recover and boom, she's fully recovered and is doing a move. She's already acting. So let's say you do this with a Yamcha assist or Kid Boo, a Kid Boo Ball would be even better. 
but that could have some real practical effects, especially in the corner, depending on if you're able to air dash and then do this, or if you have to jump air dash, how quick you can cancel it is gonna depend, uh, is gonna make the move better or worse. There's so much potential with just that kind of move, especially with uh, given that she acts pretty fast after that. We see another use of the special here, and then it quickly cuts to the reason I'm making this live. <laughs> Ke Kefla's Hell Zone Grenade, dude. What is this move? Is this move going to be snapped? <laughs> she throws the orbs. You can clearly see this isn't like a follow-up maneuver or anything like that. Goku's just standing in his base form. Kefla was just standing in her base form. And she throws this move out and it hovers around and it's curving into him. I really, and then this orb is mad late. What is this orb is mad late to the party. I want to know what happens if, let's say Goku tries to run away or Goku tries to vanish. I want to know how exactly these orbs work because right now I'm really hoping that it's kind of like a hell zone. Uh, you can definitely super dash after that, by the way, and probably get a spirit bomb. But yeah, with the recent snap stuff, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what what role this move plays in Kefla's kit. After that, we get our level three, which is actually kind of fast. You can just activate it, get it full screen, uh, and Kefla will take care of the work from there. Just slap the other guy around. <laughs> uh, and then it finishes with her classic beam. I think that's going to end the trailer, if I'm not mistaken. No, we get our outro, which is probably one of the better outros in the game. We'll just skip the... Uh, February 28th release date there. Remember, if you have the Fighters Pass, it's actually the 26th. So definitely pick that up if you want two-day early access, but that about does it for Kefla. So definitely let me know your thoughts on both UI Goku and Kefla down below. Do you think they're going to be good characters? Are they gonna get a spawn on your team? And of course, let me know your thoughts on everything else we discussed in this video today. I try to make it just jam-packed of info uh, because my last two videos were just kind of me getting hot. So hopefully this video was a nice change of pace. Other than that, while you're down there, if you did enjoy this video and are looking forward to the week of Kefla and week of UI Goku, definitely make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And hey, check out some other videos on your screen right now. I've been Dr. Doya. Thank you so much for sticking around through this entire video, and I will see you in the next one.